Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark, Mark Fusco, here for another special episode of the show. Um, so it's New Year's Eve. Well, actually, it's not. It's like December 17th, as I record this in my Salomon shirt. Anyway, um, so uh, we're going to do a little New Year's Eve special here. I have three sparkling wines that I've acquired um, at various points in time. Uh, the first one, actually, I bought a long time ago. It stayed at Underground Cellar, and I got them to deliver it um, somewhat recently. Uh, the other two are sample bottles, so this is kind of cool. I'm getting some sample bubblies now. So um, New Year's Eve, you know, um, you can go out and you can t do all the craziness and go out to dinner and go hit, you know, the, the nightclub or go hit the hotel that's having a special deal or go to Times Square and brave the cold and the whatever the element's going to be in a billion people. Or you can have a party at your house. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so obviously this is another episode that uh, somewhat ties in uh, partying at the house and uh, some sparkling wines that you may want to check out um, if you're going to have a big party, a small party, whatever. So, um, we'll get to that in a second here. Uh, anyway, so let's dive into this. So the first wine that we're going to talk about is <clears throat> this one here. So this is the La, La Monte, Montecchia uh, Coli Eugenii Fior Doranzio, or Doranzio. Yeah. I try, I mean, I know some people that really butcher, and I try to correct them all the time, and then I try to remind them, it's like, if you ever watch my shows, I kind of mess up names of things too. Anyway, so this is a, um, this is Vino Spumante Dolce. Uh, so the Cole uh, Eugenai is a DOCG in Italy. Um, it is in Padua, um, Italy. So let's get them pulled up here real quick. No, yes. Well, no, not really. Well, yeah. So, uh, let me get into their thing. So this, these guys have been around forever. And they make a bunch of other wines. This just happens to be one of the wines they make. Um, but they've been around for a long time. Um, so um, this family gave to the Republic uh, Procuratore di San Marco, Governors, Dukes of Candia, Admirals, um, they had some Admiral of the Republic who forced in 1785 the Bay of Tunis to surrender by bombing Sfax and Goleta with admirable invention, with the admirable invention of the floating rafts. I had to read that a couple times. I thought it said rats. Um, anyway, so they've been around for centuries, um, in this area of Italy, um, in the Veneto area of Italy, and uh, and they make wine. They make more than just this wine. So this is a sparkling Moscato. Yes. So um, the grapes are orange blossom yellow Moscato. I'll be honest, I've never heard of an orange blossom yellow Moscato. I'm not saying it doesn't exist, I just have never heard of it. Um, probably because it's called Moscato something. Anyway, um, so uh, they selected grapes, are, are, they, they, they uh, do hand harvesting, and I'm not going to go through the whole thing. So this wine, I actually got for free. Um, it's Underground Cellar. Um, so I got it from Underground Cellar, 
and I paid zero dollars. Um, is probably was one of those things where you buy something, you get something free, and then this was this was the free bottle. Um, and but it's worth nineteen dollars according to Underground Seller as far as their um, the retail price on that. So uh, we will address this real quick. So why am I using a regular wine glass and not a flute? Well, the flute is really narrow, and the only reason we use flutes um, is because the bubbles look nice in it. This, on the other hand, it really can concentrate because it's it's so small. I mean, yes, it's focusing, I guess, the aromas, but there's really nothing to do. This really accentuates the aromas. But also one thing to do is when you're going to evaluate sparkling wine, don't swirl it. Okay, just let it sit in the glass and then... Whew. Peachy. Absolutely. Peaches, apricot, sugar, <laughs> um, sweetness, some uh, white flowers, all kinds of stuff. And it's, it's so much habit for me to swirl the wine. It's very hard when I sparkle the wine not to swirl it. It, it smells really tasty. So let's, uh, let's get into it. It's tasty. It's really orangey, peachy, kind of orange flesh, like the actual the flesh of the orange when you, when you bite into it. It's a hints of orange and lemon. Oh, that's on the aroma. Tastes fine and vel velvety, perlage, sweet, harmonic, and persistent uh, taste. Tells you nothing. It's tasty. 19 bucks. You want something that's, quote, on the cheap? It's not really on the cheap. You can get, you can get sparkling wine for like 10 bucks. We want something like kind of sweet Moscato. It's not too bad. Um, yeah, $19. With that said, the peaches and orange are really dominating, and I couldn't have more than a glass of this. Like, I couldn't drink this all night. Some people could, but I couldn't. It's just it's too sweet, and it is a sweet wine. Not sickly sweet, but you can you can really feel some. There's a bit of syrupy, honey almost uh, sweetness to it. All right, the next one here, and this one, I failed to look up the price, and in my, oh, hold on, maybe, maybe my email had the price on it. Yes, it does. All right, so we're good. All right, so this is the, again, non-vintage, make sure again, Vovetti, Vovetti, Prosecco, all right? Um, anyway. Yes, they had the retail suggested retail price there. So I don't need to have that open. Now, um, this winery is owned by uh, Frigionette, who are out of Spain, the Gloria Ferrer uh, company. Um, very famous and, and wide reaching. They even have a little interest in the United States for sparkling wine. So uh, it's Prosecco. Um, it says, Vovetti inspired by the Latin verb voveo, uh, meaning to vow or to promise. Uh, it says, it's a unique marriage between the cool climate viticulture of northern Italy's most acclaimed Prosecco regions in Veneto and the superb winemaking of Friuli Venezia Giulia. Um, here, a gentle hand crafts Italy's most treasured white wines, result of over 100 years of family winemaking expertise. Um, and then it says, brings, the Vovetti brings together the Ferrer family's sparkling wine leg legacy and the uh, Colavini family's mastery in crafting some of Italy's finest wines. Blah, blah, blah. Artisan Prosecco. Hmm. Now, I don't know how much of that was. We're gonna, we are going to swirl this. We're going to coat the glass. And then we're going to dump it because I'm getting a lot of peach. I just want to make sure it's not 
the other wine residual of that wine. Then we'll also see corks and stuff and foil. Real quick, so pretty much every sparkling wine bottle will have a little like tab thing you can use. And you can do that, but they're kind of notorious for breaking. So really, if you want to open, if you want to open a, um, a uh, sparkling wine bottle like a Psalm, you get a wine key out and you, you cut down there so you can take the foil off and then you do the little cage thing and it's going to be six, six turns looking at it counterclockwise, okay, looking at the thing. And then you leave everything on and you get a nice grip and twist it off. I'm not going to put it on video because you can find videos on how to open sparkling wine all over the place. Um, anyway, but this one, which we're going to get to next, not this, not the, not the Vavetti, but the other one, that tab was that thick. That's not going to break. That was actually a good tab. All right. All right. So yeah, still a little bit of hint of, pe of peach, a little white floral, a touch of uh, a touch of um, bread um, on it, whereas the Moscato really didn't have it. But not a preponderance of bakery bread, yeasty kind of uh, aromas, and just you know, kind of a cleaner, drier um, nose as far as the fruit condition. It doesn't doesn't smell sweet or anything like that. Got a bit of a shock on that. I know the lower third already said how much the suggested retail price is, but for the sake of saying it, it's seventeen dollars. So, um, you know, again, I mean, not cheap wine, but not expensive, not premium, which would be is premium is considered 20 bucks, at least 20 bucks or more in the industry. Um, which makes sense because 20 bucks is kind of a breaking point, you know. Up to 20 bucks, people could do an everyday wine with it. Over 20 bucks, like, oh, a special occasion wine. So, um, very tart, um, lemony, lime, Almost a bit of bitterness to it. Um, yeah, grippiness to it. Phenolic bitterness, if you will. Um, some lemon, lemon rind, like, you know, getting that lemon and, and lime skin. And um, there's a bit of, I don't want to say stemminess to it, but yeah, there's 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 something close to that in here. There's kind of a bitterness to it, which isn't bad. Um, if you had it with food, maybe the bitterness would be paired well with that, and could be um, counterbalanced with everything. It's a good wine. It's seventeen dollars. It's not terribly expensive. Um, it is prosecco. It's it's better than your than your run of the mill prosecco that just kind of sucks. Um, so this is definitely a step or two above that, and it tastes that way, and, and it's it's got good flavor to it. Um, I like it, um, but then again, I also when I go out, I if I want a glass of prosecco, there's only one usually option to get anyway, and it's usually the cheap stuff. This tastes this does taste better than that. Let me get a little more taste on this. I can see having that. Totally can see having some of that during a nice little meal, little party action. It's pretty good. If you see it, buy it. Um, 
Yeah, 17 bucks. All right, let's move on to, we're going to close out some of these. Who's he, what's it? There we go. All right, now we're going for the big boy. Make sure. So this is also a non-vintage, the Bruno, Bruno Payard. Bam. Um, this is the Premier Cuvée. Um, yeah, this is the Premier Cuvée. And it is a blend of exclusively first pressing the purest juice Pinot Noir, 45%, Chardonnay, 33%. And Pinot Meunier, 22%, part of which 20% was in barrel for the first fermentation. So this is the suggested retail price of $50. So we're not talking, we're not talking, you know, cheap champagne. This is, you know, starting to get into its premium levels. Um, so the reserve wines, uh, a blend of 25 vintages since 1985, up to 50% of the final blend. Uh, aging is longer than the legal requirement. Uh, three years surly, then a minimum of a further five months after disgorgement. Um, they do use dosage. So um, one thing about these guys, well, they, they've been around for a while. Um, let me pull up those fact sheets. Um, so Bruno Payard, uh, he started this winery in 1981 at the age of 27. He traded in his vintage Jaguar for 50,000 francs. Um, yeah, <laughs> to get started. That's some love, right? That's dedication. You, 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 yeah, because 50,000 francs in 81 for a car? Yeah, dude. Um, so he started and uh, he's definitely one of those uh, grower champagne houses uh, trying to um, uh, focus on quality, not quantity. Uh, I believe they have 62 acres of vineyards right now. Um, I was trying to find that that note in here somewhere. Uh, yes, so in 1994, he began to buy vineyards. The house now owns 62 acres, almost half of which are Grand Cru. Um, and then from these vineyards... Uh, accounts over 50% of the production needs. Um, so it sounds like he also gets some uh, wines from other high level uh, vineyards throughout Champagne area. And yeah, it says the, the house sources remaining fruit from high quality independent growers with whom Bruno Payard has worked for, has worked with for over 30 years. So he's been in the business for a while. And he makes sure he gets, I guess, the top quality grapes. All right, I'm going to close that. His daughter is now involved with the um, with the venture. So she's uh, helping him with that. And I think that's going to do it for the little background on it. I'll have links below for everybody. So let's check it out. This simply has that classic champagne uh, aroma to it. You get the breadziness, the beer quality. So yeah, I mean the, that's the Lee's aging, and and not just champagne gets this, but anything that sits Sir Lee or on the Lee's, which is the dead yeast cells, uh, for an extended period of time, will start getting bready, yeasty, stale beer type of aromas. So yeah, it has has all that to it. A little citrus. That's really it. I, I just want to swirl this thing, but I can't or shouldn't. Yeah. You really shouldn't mistake champagne for anything other than champagne. And you really shouldn't mistake anything that's not champagne for champagne. However, in a blind, I can see that some people, especially if, if the if the sparkling wine is made in a champagne style, uses the champagne, the grapes of champagne, you know, everything is if it is champagne, it's just in a different part of the world. Totally can see it be like, well, it's champagne. 
But when you're drinking higher quality champagne, it's, it, you know you're drinking champagne. This is really good. This is really good. Um, so it has similar uh, flavors on it. Um, definitely a tartness to it. Um, tart, um, tart lemon and lime. Tart, I would call it, I want to say apricot. Apricot, peach, tangerine. I mean, it's just, and these aren't like, like these are not like coming through loud and clear type of flavors. It's kind of like, okay, I can call that tangerine, peach, or or apricot. Like it's it's kind of like they all kind of come through a little bit if you're thinking about it. If you're not thinking about it, you're just like, it tastes really good. Um, yeah, it's a little white floral, but that's about it. Like nothing, no spices, no. No obvious, I mean, there's, there's oak treatment, but you, oak doesn't really come through. Um, so, I mean, it's, it is tasty. Now, this is definitely, I say, if you're having a party for New Year's Eve, you're probably not rolling deep with this. I mean, if you are, invite me over. Um, unfortunately, I have to work the night job on New Year's Eve, so I'm not getting out, out anytime soon. But if you're going to pop open a bottle of this, you know, let me know and I'll, I'll come share it with you. Um, if you're going to have a small intimate party and you want to have like a special champagne to, to top the night off or to get the night started, here's a little hint. Always drink the best stuff first because as you get more and more drunk, you can't appreciate the good stuff as much as you can when you're sober or more sober. Always start with the good stuff. Within that category, like... You know, if you're going to have like an awesome Cabernet Sauvignon, but you're starting with like appetizers that scream Chardonnay, well, drink the best Chardonnay you you can that you want to put out, okay, or can afford. And then when you get to, okay, well, now I should be drinking red wine. Well, what kind of red wine should I drink? Okay, if you have more than one bottle, stick with the same bottle. Or if you're going to go from a, uh, you have a more expensive and least, at least expensive bottle, hit the more expensive first. This is really good. If you see this, you should buy it. Now, I also bought these little things over at Amazon. I can't remember the name of it. I'll try to remember to put a link in the, in the, sh in the show notes on, on, the, on the website. But the reason I got this one versus some of the other ones is because it has this little, this little lever here. So some other ones you twist, and I found that that twisty thing doesn't really work so well. So you just put this on here, make sure it's all the way down. And it clamps on and it's going to stay on like the little twisties. They sometimes go and you get champagne all over your, all over your, um, whatchamacallit, your, your fridge. And that, that sucks. So, um, I just bought these. This is really the first time I've used them. So I kind of had to be like, well, so get that. Bam. And they're like, but they're, but they're kind of expensive, like eight something dollars. For each one on Amazon. So I knew I needed three, so I bought three. And I bought some other ones at Specs that don't have the clamp, but they have they but they come down on both sides. And those are those are okay. Um, but sometimes those little clamps kind of start not working so well. I wanted something that was like this. Uh, but they were like five-ish dollars each at Specs. If you know you, if you don't have a specs in your area, which means you're pretty much out of the Texas area. Um, similar the thing the thing they're from Oneida and they're like they're nice the stainless steel they look they look good they're like five something dollars but yeah if you're gonna have some bubbly and you want to preserve it this will help preserve it because it'll keep the CO2 in there and you'll have all the fresh of uh, the bubbles the fresh bubbles there all right so um cool under 30 minutes again uh that's gonna do it for uh this episode I hope that um since you should be watching this before New Year's Eve, that you are safe. Um, hopefully, for the Christmas episode, you were safe. Um, but that when you, if you go out for New Year's Eve, be smart, be safe. Uber if you have to. Um, you know, don't take a chance. 
Um, some places have free like uh, tow service. Like you call it the tow truck, and they'll tow your truck back. I mean, tow your tow, tow your car back home for free. How cool is that? Uh, I know when I live in Chicago for like New Year's Eve after a certain time to like five or six in the morning the next day, they were giving free CTA rides for like the, the bus and the train to, to encourage people to like take those forms of transportation to wherever they were going. And they would, they, on the way home, they would take the bus or the train home instead of driving home. So uh, just be smart. I mean, I know some people maybe push the limit here and there. Uh, probably shouldn't have been behind the wheel of a car, but they weren't like really that far over. It doesn't matter. I mean, when you get pulled over, you're gonna, you're, and they're gonna get you. So, um, so be smart, be safe, have a lot of fun, uh, drink some good, drink some good bubbles. These two are reasonable at seventeen ish dollars. Uh, this is fifty bucks. So if you want to splurge for like a little special small group at your house, or you just want like a nice little champagne to have at the house, for, like for special occasion type of thing. There you go, 50 bucks. You and a friend or two or three can enjoy that. All right, that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, as always, click the links above to friend me up. Uh, click the links below to get more information about the wines. Um, and hit the donate button to send me some ducats to purchase more wine. And uh, that's going to do it. We're going to see everyone again. Thanks for stopping by. And we'll see everyone again next time.